Welcome to Chaos Cortex. Hey guys, welcome back. So a couple days ago I released a video about this guy right here, Thor's Hammer. Fully 3D printed of course. Um, so if you have not checked that out, I will put a link, boom, over here. So um, I've gotten quite a few requests to elaborate on the design process and um, you know, kind of help people understand some of my techniques and stuff in Tinkercad. Um, and while I'm definitely no expert at this, um, I do have a lot of fun in here and I'm basically just messing around with shapes until I get the shape I want. Um, so I, I have figured out a couple of pretty good techniques and I will try to share those as much as possible. And overall, um, this whole design process took about six hours of just me in here modeling. So um, I have sped that up considerably to make this video about 10 minutes long. Um, so it will be going pretty fast, but I'll try to talk along with it to help, um, help you understand what's happening. So let's take a look at how I did this. Okay guys, so first of all what we do is we start with a cube, as most of my prints do. Um, and then I needed to bevel the edges to get these sections right here. Um, so I just took some more cubes and started angling them. I think I set these to be at about a 30 degree angle because I just kind of eyeballed that and that's what looked about right to me. And then I um, used a lot of reference images I found online um, and I just basically worked from those. And as you can see there, I just tapered off each of those edges and then I did the same around the rest of the body. And just adjusting those to make sure that they're even then flip them around and go to do the same on the bottom. And then I went and did those um, little corner areas there in kind of the same way. This one took two different types of rotation. So you can see me there. I'm using that little cube as just a, uh, a basis for the angle because I knew I needed that slope at um, 45 degrees, I think is what I set it at. And, or maybe it was 30. And then, um, so I just took that cube, rotated it to 30, and then um, matched up the roof to that. And I could have worked out the math and everything, but it was just a really quick, simple way of doing that. And then here I am just breaking it in half so the two sides are symmetrical. And then I join it, making sure that it's the same um, width that I had it before. And then I actually realized, looking at the images, that those um, tapered edges are actually inset a little bit. And so here I broke the model into three different parts. and. Then I took those and squished them just a little bit, rejoined them, and then I um, kind of brought them down in size a little bit. Oh, I must have done that at a later point. Um, here it looks like I am just trying to find the center point of the, um, the top of the model there. And um, I know you can do that with rulers, I just, for whatever reason, I did it with um, cubes. And so there's the basis of the handle, making sure that's centered there. Oh, and that's where I realized I needed to inset those a little bit. So I just grabbed them, scaled it down slightly, and as you can see there, it actually starts to look a lot better from that point. Um, and then this is where I do those, um, the details uh, right here. And basically what I did there is I just took a line, divided it into three, and then um, took two more lines and just angled them and tried to make the edges meet up as much as possible. And you can see it turned out pretty well. And then I just dug it into the side a little bit and did the same for the other side. And then here I actually just broke down um, the, I duplicated the hammer and then broke it down into um, some smaller sections so I could get these little inlays um, right here. So you can see me doing that there. I use a couple of different techniques but mostly I'm just chopping sections out until I have those two spots specifically and then I make holes and um, combine them there. And then this is where I work on the handle itself. And the handle's got some pretty interesting details on it. So 
I used, um, first of all, that uh, roof piece, which is basically just like a triangle in 3D space. Um, and then I used my round detail um, method to round it out and give it more of a curved look like you see on Thor's hammer's uh, handle. And then I'm just using these um, to round out the tips because um, these are not actually straight or uh, pointed. So I just round them out uh, to give it an, a more aesthetic look there. Resize it a bit and then I just take that ring and Put it, well, here I'm actually creating the base for it, which is just some more cylinders. Um, and then I bring up that piece and use the duplicate function to um, throw it, to make it uh, cascade up the hammer. And I didn't get it right there, so I adjusted it. And then there we go. That gave me, uh, I think there's 10 of those rings on the hammer, uh, or on the handle. So that's what I was doing there. And then here is where I create the, um, the uh, bottom part for the handle, the, yeah, the very bottom. And as you can see, there's quite a few details on that as well. But yeah, this is what we're creating right there. And so I'm using quite a few different shapes. And then I'm just cutting a big chunk out of it, as you can see right here. Okay, and here you can see I brought in the details, and I actually just created these from a 2D image um, and imported them to and gave them some depth, and then used my round detail technique to get those put on there um, smoothly. Um, and I just got those from reference images online. I tried to find the, um, the straightest um, view that I could on the hammer. And then I just kind of photoshopped the rest of the hammer out until I had just those details. And then I used the um, online converter for it um, to turn it into an SVG. And then I could import it in here. Um, if you want to know how I do that, I'll put a link up there to the video where I show that. And then there we have the handle. I position it. And then um, here I'm just actually changing the color so I can kind of see what it'll look like. Um, and then, I'm not sure what I'm doing right here. Oh, this is where I create the little um, areas to put the details up here. And I, I took a pretty weird approach to that. Not quite sure why I didn't just use a, um, oh, because I needed those tapered edges. so. I just thought I would take what I had and then cut away from it, which worked out pretty well. Um, so you can see it there, and then I just basically take that and then move it around all four sides so we have all of those um, inset areas, and then I take it and um, apply it to the other side as well. And then I take this detail here, um, size it appropriately, get the correct angle, and then add it and repeat the process of putting it everywhere else that it needs to be. And there we have those details, and there's the color for it, and then... Um, so this is pretty much the finished hammer. Um, I think what I'm doing here is just creating the, um, oh, this is the top part. There is one more part to it. There we go. Um, now from here, it is just creating the insides and making it more um, 3D printable because right now it's huge and would not print very well um, and would not fit on my printer. So I split the body in half. The handle's already separate. Um, but I need to make a way for them to all kind of combine together so I can glue it and um, I don't really trust myself just holding things together and gluing them in place. So I um, created some connector pins to make sure that I have things in the right place. And that will allow me to um, basically just use those to set it in place and I don't have to trust myself at all, which is good. So um, kind of a fun fact about Tinkercad that some people don't know is you can actually just zoom right into objects. So right here I'm working on the inside of it. Um, 
and yeah I just you can just zoom the camera right in and really get into the the details there and that's actually very very handy and since those are two objects there there's just a wall on the inside and I can flip around between those walls really easily and then there I flip them down and start to get everything printed and then um, I am just going to separate the handle into three printable sections. Um, and if you guys would like to know how I do that, um, I can post a video on that. I'm not sure if that's common knowledge or not. Um, I just basically take some cubes and then make those cubes the size that are, yeah, the, the box, uh, make those the size that I want. And um, yeah, just start duplicating it and cutting parts away until I have the pieces I need. And then here I'm just adding the connector pins. And I think that's about where we end it. Well, there you have it. I hope you guys have gotten some use out of this. Um, I know it was kind of really rushed and rambly because I've never really done one of these before. So um, commentary is kind of a weird thing for me to do. Um, but I hope it made sense and I hope you guys liked it. Um, if there's anything you saw in there that I did not explain well enough, um, leave me a comment and I will, um, if it's something I can easily explain in a comment, I will do so. And if it is not, then I will make a video showing that specific technique. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and, um, okay guys, thanks for joining me. See you next time. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. It helps me out a lot. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at ChaosCoreTech. And once you've done all that, check out some of these other videos I've made. Thanks for watching, guys.